Do we have hopes for a stimulus package before the election? Is Amazon past its prime, literally? And October 19th is here. It's time to mark the day of the biggest crash in Wall Street history. What this all tells me is that there's an area right now, a tiny area in the market where I believe the next millionaires are soon to be minted. I'm gonna talk about that area and I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing in that area. So let's roll tape. Hey everyone, Tom here. Welcome to Tom's Trading Room where we spot opportunities, create alternative trades other than buying and holding stocks. Do me a favor right now and vote with the click of your mouse and like this video below. It helps support the channel. Also, by clicking on the subscribe button to the right and dinging the bell, you'll be notified when any future videos are uploaded. All right, so let's get down to business. First, over the weekend, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is giving President Trump 48 hours to cut a deal for much needed stimulus for the American people, or it's not going to happen until after the election. This, in my mind, makes for a bearish setup before I talk about anything else. Now, Amazon last week had Prime Day, and it was actually two days. They reported a 30% jump in sales, which was absolutely incredible when you look at what they're already selling. I wonder if they're actually going to change the Christmas shopping season to now before Halloween. Wouldn't surprise me. I was in Lowe's Home Improvements last week, and the Christmas trees are already set up at the front of the store. But the real news with Amazon was the 100-point sell-off at the close last Friday and the moves that continued lower today. Has Amazon and Fang finally seen a top? The charts today may suggest more volatility is coming. Now, this sets me up for what I really want to discuss. And, you know, today's October 19th. 33 years ago today marked the crash of the stock market in 1987. Leading up to that, uh, there was a lot of new traders with a lot of new money and a lot of greed and guess what? No experience. It kind of reminds me of today's TikTok and Robinhood traders. You know, Robinhood, for instance, really kind of started a whole new evolution of trading using their free commissions and free stock formula. From there, we've gone to TikTok investors, uh, like this gentleman beside me here, who is named the Uber trader. And uh, of course, he kind of comes and goes as he needs to collect more money. Here's the problem. Today, B-list and social media celebs with absolutely zero knowledge in the stock market are now pitching stocks and stock market seminars. Trust me, if one of this group here starts pitching a stock market seminar, I'm hitting the sell button immediately. Look, if you ask me, the next millionaires to be minted going forward today are going to be doing it with a chart like this. What is this? What am I doing with it? And what am I going to show you? Well, I'm going to do that right now. So let's go ahead and dive into my research and see what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about here, if most of you don't realize it, is cryptocurrencies and more importantly, Bitcoin. All right. So uh, before I get into the charts and my predictions, as well as a lot of people that are smarter than me, Let's first start to talk about how to get started in uh, Bitcoin if you're, if you're new to this. Uh, the first thing I would suggest you look at doing is setting up your first wallet. That's just an, a digital wallet. It's an online platform. That's what you use to buy and sell cryptocurrencies, just like you would, for instance, with a stock account, although they're not stock accounts. They are crypto exchanges. And one of the most popular ones is none other than Coinbase. Uh, which is www.coinbase.com, all right? Uh, very easy to get started with Coinbase. Obviously, you have to be a U.S. resident to use Coinbase as they're based out of San Francisco, California. And once you get started and you fill out a little bit of information, then deposit some money, you will be able to trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and a couple of dozen other cryptocurrencies, which is fantastic because only even a short year ago, they had far fewer cryptocurrencies and microcurrencies that you could trade. 
Now let's talk about uh, these uh, the, the chart of uh, of Bitcoin. Take a look at this. This is Bitcoin's chart going all the way back to 2013. And back then, I was actually mining uh, cryptocurrency right back around this area when it was only about a billion dollar market cap. And so. Uh, remember, Bitcoin actually started in 2009, but it started gaining popularity in 2013. And then as it jumped up, uh, you may have heard of the, the uh, person that bought the most expensive pizza, spent 10,000 Bitcoins on a pizza. And uh, back then, obviously, they weren't worth anywhere near what they are now. But imagine 10,000 Bitcoins, uh, you know, tr uh, against the, the price, which is over $10,000 uh, per coin. Uh, you can only imagine what this guy is thinking right now. Uh, but moving forward, now if you take a look at what's happened in the last seven years, this particular cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has gone up 100-fold to go from, again, $100 per coin to over $10,000 per coin now. So what a huge move. I still think that this is in its early stages. I'm not the only one that thinks so. If you take a look at some billionaires out there that have a lot, that, that first of all, they got a lot uh, more knowledge on the subject than I do. They're a lot smarter than me, and obviously they're better capitalized. But if you take a look first, Wenceslas, he says that he believes Bitcoin is going to be a million dollars by 2027. Uh, by the way, Wences is the founder of Zappo. Bitcoin startup. He's also a board member of PayPal. So this isn't some guy out there in the middle of nowhere uh, sitting on the moon eating cheese. Um, he really uh, has, he's very committed to this and he believes that uh, five to 10 years he's seeing this actually occur. John Pfeffer, who's a partner at uh, family office Pfeffer Capital, he's looking at a $700,000 price tag. And what he sees is a trade-off between gold bars, uh, which is currently being held as private, uh, private investment, changing to digital assets like cryptocurrency, more importantly, Bitcoin. Here's a few more. Jeremy Liu is saying 500000 by 2030. Now, he's the partner over at Lightspeed Venture. I've seen him on, CV, on, on CNBC a few times. Uh, he also started up uh, the company, which is Ledger X. All right. Um, I have a Ledger wallet. I have a few of them. These are cold storage wallets that you use to store your Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies offline, uh, not at exchanges. OK. And so uh, he believes 500,000 by 2030. Mark Yusko, uh, he is a billionaire investor over at Morgan Creek Capital. He's the founder. $400,000. He doesn't have a date on this, but he, again, he's looking at the math where you look at the gold equivalent. He's looking at gold today as at $8 trillion. And so he sees this as a very, a very good alternative asset to gold. I'm going to give you two more, right? Roger Ver, uh, you know, Roger is an early investor in Bitcoin. He sees $250,000. Uh, it doesn't have a date on that one but he believes that uh, this thing could really spike in value. And then there's Kay Von Peterson, who is, uh, has a $100,000 price target by 2027. Now, um, you know, what do I think? Well, let's first talk about when the last Bitcoin is going to be mined, because they started uh, back in 2009. And, uh, you know, as more of these Bitcoins get digitally mined, there's less that are left over. There's only a 21 million uh, block of Bitcoins. They're not minting anymore. They're not splitting the that, like a stock split. There's no more coins that are going to be available. That's one of the things people love about Bitcoin is that it, it's, uh, you know, the government or no one else for that matter can't print anymore. 2140 is the year that the last and final Bitcoin is, uh, is likely to be mined. Uh, and so because of that, now keep in mind, these don't, aren't mine linear, all right? As more come out, it gets harder and harder for the next ones to come out. So, you know, keep in mind the bulk, uh, more than half of Bitcoins have already been mined. And so uh, that number is going to, you know, here in the, this year, we're going to see many more come out than in 10 years. So as that, that number uh, goes down, okay, 
um, I believe demand is going to keep going up. This is what I think. I think that, first of all, there's smarter people with more money in this space than myself. But with the last Bitcoin to be mined in 2040, I believe, based on dwindling supply and the increased ability to use Bitcoin as an asset worldwide, I like the averages between all these billionaire predictions. So I like, and I think it's very realistic, that Bitcoin could be worth $500,000 per coin by the year 2030. That's 10 years from now, right? Which the next question that I asked and you have to ask yourself is, well, if Bitcoin's at 10,000, it's actually over 10,000. We're approaching 12 right now. But if it's at 10,000, how many times does it have to double before it gets to 500,000? Because that's, that's really the next por uh, portion of math that I want to know. And the answer is a little more than 5.5 times, right? So if you were to look at what I call Bitcoin doubles, it looks like this. The first double would occur from 10,000 to 20. The second double would occur going from 20,000 to 40,000. The third double would occur from 40,000 to 80,000. The fourth would be 80,000 to 160,000 per coin. And the fifth would go 160 to 320. And not even before you get through the sixth double, like I said, it's somewhere just past 5.5. Your sixth double would occur if Bitcoin were to go from 320,000 per coin to 640,000 per coin. Now, Bitcoin is only one of several cryptocurrencies out there in the space. I also think Ethereum is going to catch fire and be a big one soon as well. But I wanted to share with you in what can be times of uncertainty, times of a market top, times of an election, which every four years, they're always historic, aren't they? Um, but also times of we're seeing melt up and mass hysteria where people are getting into the market and throwing everything they've got at it with very little if no experience, all right? Make, to me, makes this space uh, one of the areas that has the least amount of risk compared to the most amount of upside. Hey, thanks again. If you found this video educational, then be sure to like and subscribe below the video. Also, be on the lookout for part two of my Trading Essential series that will be uploaded to our channel later this week. See you soon.